Well, first things first, I know you're, uh, you're, not, you're from out west. Have you gotten used to or accustomed to Michigan weather yet? Not really. <laughs> I haven't done a whole lot this summer other, other than work. Very exciting day. We welcome new president of baseball operations, Scott Harris. I believe everything can change and improve. Our in-game strategy can always improve. Our roster construction can always improve. Our development can always improve at all levels of the organization. Big time power by Torkelson. History, a combined no hitter for the Detroit Tigers. Fly ball right field. Out of here! When they think of Detroit, I want them to think of an environment where they're going to be surrounded by people in this organization that are going to get the absolute most out of them. So as your first season winds down, big picture, what's been a, a takeaway for you to this point? I got a lot of takeaways. I think um, the one I think about a lot is I think there are a lot of players in this organization who are getting better, not just in the big leagues. I mean, it's fun to see the middle of our order these days. Um, got a lot of young guys who are real threats in the middle of the order. But I watch our minor league games every night. There are a lot of players up and down our system who are, who are getting better. Um, it's a credit to our, our player development staff and AJ and his staff are doing a great job. You know, we came here and we wanted to build a nucleus of young players on both sides of the ball that we feel like are going to be out on that field for a long time. I think we took real big steps in the big leagues towards that, and we took big steps in the minor leagues toward, towards that. You start looking at this organization top to bottom, um, we got guys coming at every position. You've mentioned when it comes to development, you know, how it's important to develop young players and develop a young core. And we've seen maybe that first wave of young players. You talk about the, the heart of the order right now. An RBI double for Riley Green. Orkelson with a blast. That's out of here. Rips one right field. A three run blast for Carpenter. Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, Kerry Carpenter. How pleased are you with that development this early uh, in their big league careers? When I think about those guys, a couple things stick, stick out. One, they're already threats in the middle of the order. You know, the starting pitcher is always mindful of, you know, how close he is to that part of our order, which is a great sign for us. The other thing that's really important is they're, they're continuing to get better. We're seeing it right before our eyes. They're continuing to get better. They're continuing to drive the ball out of the ballpark using all fields. And they're continuing to drive pitches that they couldn't quite get to earlier in the year, um, which, which, which is great for us. I also think, you know, stepping back and looking at that group, uh, the two guys that got drafted at the very top of the first round, and they're coming into their own here. And then there's a 19th round pick who seemingly came out of nowhere and is now hitting in the middle of our order. Um, in many ways, you know, CARP embodies what we want to be as an organization. We want to be able to find talent anywhere, and we want to be able to usher that talent to the big leagues and help them become impact players. And as a sign to all of our players in the minor leagues, like, hey, if you keep performing, if you keep earning your way up through through the minor leagues, like you're gonna get an opportunity just like Carp did in this organization. So really proud of all three of those guys for, for different reasons and, and proud of what they mean to this team. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The pitching staff, you know, it's been a bit of a mixed bag this year, I think with you know, some injuries and certainly with some of the younger guys and, and then performance mixed into that. How do you see that position group, say you're starting pitching, continue to evolve? Yeah, I think the, the pitching staff is getting better both as a group and as individuals. As a group, um, the pitching staff is trusting their stuff more. You know, they're pounding the zone. They're going right out at hitters. They're, they're trying to win the race to two strikes and, and put hitters away quickly as a group. Um, I think if you look at this group relative to, you know, past seasons, like there, there is a real change. And then as individuals, I've been really pleased on the individual work that they are doing. So you know, two examples for me. One, um, Reese Olsen, both fastballs and his slider have gotten better this year. You know, um, he was a guy who always had plus secondary stuff. You know, he punched a lot of tickets in the minor leagues with his secondary stuff, but pushing him to the big leagues forced him to, um, you know, improve his fastball quality and his locations. And then he also improved his slider too, and you saw it against the Yankees, a pretty remarkable performance for him. And then, you know, Tarek Skubal, 
he was he's been out for months, but he used those months to get better. You know, you're looking at the changeup that he's throwing right now. That's a real weapon for him. You know, he used that time to make sure that he got better, so that by the time he got back on the mound, it was a better version of him that than than the one that had left the mound last year. So, um, those are some of the storylines that, that really stick out to me. He got him swinging. Controlling the strike zone is something you've you've hammered since you know day one. How pleased are you with kind of the overall where you're at and where you see it going? I think we're headed in a really good direction. You know, um, there are pitchers up and down our organization who are both um, improving the quality of their stuff and improving their command. But I think we're doing a really good job on that on that front up and down the organization. Um, I think at the plate, uh, I'd like to see uh, improved uh, at bat quality. You know, I think we're chasing a little bit too much um, in the big leagues, chasing pitches out of the zone. You know, if we're swinging at better pitches, we're going to hit for more power. We've been making some progress on that front. I think we got a ways to go there, but I like to see the progress that we've made in a few months. It all starts tonight with Parker Meadows making his big league debut. Parker Meadows rips one to right. His first hit as a major leaguer. Like a gazelle. And his first extra base hit is a triple. I'm coming in hot. Talk about the young talent that's in the system, and Parker Meadows makes his debut. Big splash, obviously, in his first week uh, in the call-up. And one thing I thought was so interesting that you had mentioned was how much you wanted him to be able to, to make his debut in front of these fans. Why is that so important? Debuting a young player is a real special uh, moment for the organization. Um, I can't tell you how many people have their fingerprints all over Parker. From the moment you know the first scout went in to um, scout him in high school in Georgia, all the way through every level, every coach, every manager, every coordinator who who touched him and helped him get better and helped him get to this moment. So, I view debuting a player as a really proud moment for the organization because it's um, a tribute to all of the the people that contributed to his development and his debut. And it's also a special moment for the fans. You know, when you see a young player who has a chance to be here for a long time, has a chance to contribute in you know, all facets of the game for a long time, uh, it's a sign of hope. It's a sign of, of progress. It's a sign that you know, things that are changing around here. And then when that same player walks it off in the first week <laughs> in the big leagues, it's, you know, it's another sign of hope and progress. And uh, it's just a really proud moment for both the organization and the fans. So it was important to me that we, we did it here. Well, Tigers fans, as you know, you know, very passionate, and um, and they love the big league ball players. And it'd be one thing if it was just Parker Meadows, and then, well, that's all that's coming. Uh, how much do you appreciate the eagerness of the fans to see young talent, you know, continue to emerge, continue, continue to get called up? I mean, I love it. I have said this a couple of times. I want to see all these guys up here too. Um, it's important that they're ready to be up here. But you know, stepping back in my job. All the attention that is on our minor league players is a sign of health for the organization. It's, it's a sign that our, our fans really care, that they're tuning in to the Toledo game every night, they're tuning in to the Erie game every night. Um, it's special to be in the org this organization with fans who really care uh, about this and, who've, and fans who believe in these young players and believe that they are going to help bring a, um, a really competitive future up here in Detroit and you know hopefully a team that's going to play deep in October every year. Lipsius with a drive, pounded, deep left center field, back it goes, gone! Welcome to the big leagues, get that ball back, it's his first as a major leaguer. Are there any prospects that uh, we should be, you know, whether or not they're under the radar or, or, or maybe knocking at the door that fans should be getting familiar with that, uh, that have the potential to emerge uh, with the big league club? I think so, you know, um, a couple, I'll give you two on both sides of the ball. Um, the first one is, is Justice Bigby, uh, drafting the same round as Kerry Carpenter. Um, he, when you watch him hit, he generates real strength and power in his swing. Um, he absolutely dominated West Michigan. We moved him up to Erie expecting you know, some regression. He's been better in Erie than he was in West Michigan. Um, this is a guy that you, know, you want to talk about earning your way through the minor leagues. He's, he's doing it, and it's really exciting to watch. 
Another guy that sticks out to me is Brady Allen. We, we acquired him in a small trade earlier this year with the Marlins, um, and all he's done is hit. Um, he's in West Michigan right now. Uh, he's a really athletic outfielder. He really attacks the baseball in, uh, at all three positions in the outfield. Um, and he's doing a lot of damage to the plate, especially against left-handed pitching. Um, he looks like a guy that's going to continue to climb through our system and has a chance to get out, out here uh, in Detroit. And I think on the pitching side, um, Sawyer Gibson Long and Troy Melton are two, two guys that have made real changes to their pitch mixes this year and have put out great years. You know, on Sawyer's front, he added a cutter. Um, we changed the grip on his changeup, and now he's he's punching out like 30% in AAA right now. He's really attacking hitters differently than he has in the past with better stuff, and he has a lot more confidence in his stuff, and he's pretty close to, to getting to the big leagues. Uh, and then Troy Melton is is performing really well in West, in West Michigan. He's another guy we added a cutter to because we thought that it could help elevate the entire mix. Again, we, we're trying to find all those small gains up and down our system, and. You know, Ryan Garko and the player development staff have done a, a remarkable job. How important is it for you guys to have that open dialogue with players and say, hey, here's where we see you, this is where we see growth, and this is where you're going to be able to get to the next step? Yeah. I think it starts with AJ. AJ has a lot of those conversations, a lot of those open, honest conversations, you know, over coffee or a beer or something, and he's given direct feedback to our players, so they always know where they stand with him. It's, you know, it's one of the many reasons why I think AJ is an excellent manager for us. We've applied that through the minor leagues. I'll give you an example. You know, Jace Young was, he started the year in West Michigan. Um, he was absolutely raking in West Michigan. We wanted him to tighten up his, his zone control. We wanted him to um, control the strike zone a little bit better. Um, so we challenged him to do that before he earned a promotion to Erie. He responded uh, to the challenge. He, he faced it head on. Um, and he went out and dominated the strike zone, earned a promotion to Erie, and now he's raking in Erie. So I think one of the things that we are trying to uh, preach throughout our organization, let's, let's give open and honest feedback, both the positive side and the constructive side, because we feel like at the end of the day, we're gonna be able to achieve those small gains, and these players are gonna be better when they're, when they're out here in Detroit. This one drilled out to right field, and Drago goes back, looks up, that ball's crushed and gone. Touch of all time, Chase Young. With the offseason looming, you know, final month of the season, the stretch run, if you will, what, what are some of the things you'll be keeping a close eye on uh, or areas of growth you hope to see over the final month? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in, the, in recent weeks, um, We've taken a little bit of a step back um, in the strike zone. Uh, I think our pitchers have, uh, you know, struggled to command the strike zone the way we were earlier in the season. Um, I'm gonna pay a close uh, pay close attention to our ability to get back in the zone um, on the pitching side of the uh, of the ball, and on the hitting side of the ball, you know. In the second half, we really have you know, done a lot more damage than we did in the, in the first half. I think that's a product of, of swinging, better uh, swinging at better pitches and bringing more sophisticated game plans into games. Um, I'm going to pay attention to that, see if, see if we can carry that momentum through the end of the season and continue to be more um, productive as an entire offense and, and hit for more power through the end of the season, because I think that's a good sign for us. And, it's a good chance that that'll bleed into next year. Back it goes, gone! Tarkelson will score thanks to Matt Vierling's RBI single. A three hit night for Rodgers, and it's a 4-1 Tigers lead. The structure of, the, of your coaches this year, where you have multiple voices, say in the hitting department, for example, I guess how pleased are you with it, being able to see those guys the way they're hitting now and maybe as a byproduct of you know how you've structured that department. Yeah, I mean, I, when I think about their, our coaching staff, um, I think AJ built a lot of diversity into this staff. And I think that's why many different types of players are getting better. We have three hitting coaches who come from very different backgrounds and they can reach different players on different dimensions, which has really helped all of our hitters um, you know, kind of take that next step in their development. So we talked about Carp, Riley, and, and Tor. Um, 
But there are some other players that are quietly putting together some really nice years. Jake Rogers has become one of the better power hitting catchers in the game. And that's partly due to a hitting department that knows how to reach, it, reach him, supports him um, at every turn, and helps him build a really, um, really good plan that he can actually execute against starting pitchers every night. So really proud of the staff that AJ put together, really proud of how AJ is leading the staff, and really proud of the ability to you know, flex different muscles for different types of players in, in our clubhouse. Positional versatility is something that you've uh, highlighted as well. We've seen that with a lot of guys this season, no question. One guy who stands out to me would be a guy like Matt Vierling, who we saw, you know, played a lot of right field, moved him around to some of the other outfield spots and gets an opportunity at the at the hot corner at third base. Yeah, no, I I feel like um, I should have realized how good he was sooner. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I wish I knew he was this good earlier in the season. We talked about when we acquired him that he could go play on the dirt. Um, we thought that was an option, not a strength. And I think it's becoming a strength. Like you're seeing, um, you're seeing the way he attacks the baseball, you're seeing the arm strength every night. Um, and I think it's gonna be a real part of his game moving forward. And it's gonna make us a better team because it's gonna give AJ more options to, to get him in the lineup, um, knowing that he can, he can really play on the dirt and be an asset there. Fielding on the backhand, what a play! And I was very impressed by his commitment to innovation, as well as his uh, thinking and, and understanding how important culture is uh, to shape uh, and, and make sure that the organization is positioned to execute at a high level. So, I mean, I, I could go on. Uh, there were a lot of things that I really liked uh, about Scott through the interview process. He's, he's very competitive and he's driven to win a World Series. Those are some of the main things that I saw through the interview process that were very impressive. Well, you know, just like the organization had a, had a, an idea in mind, and they they found Scott Harris. Like, where did you get your first break in baseball? And do you remember like the first aha moment where I was like, yeah, this is it? Um, yeah, I've had a lot of breaks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've lived a very blessed life in in baseball. Um, you know. The, uh, the one that comes to mind to me is I met um, a former player and general manager named Al Rosen when I was really young. I was, you know, I was in college. I wanted to get into baseball. I had no idea how. I didn't know anybody. Um, and uh, through uh, my grandmother, I met Mr. Rosen. And I had lunch with him in Palm Springs out in California. Um, I showed up. I was um, so nervous. I was, you know, like my hands were like shaking under the table. And I just sat there and we had lunch. And I don't think I said eight words in the entire lunch. I was just listening to his stories. Um, he was on first base when Willie Mays made the catch in, in center field. Um, and he was telling me stories about that. And uh, anyways, after lunch, I was just so inspired to try to jump into to baseball. And so I wrote a letter to every team and I got a few responses back. I brought those responses back to Mr. Rosen and asked him for some advice. And from that moment, he became a mentor for me, um, you know, for the rest of his life. We would talk every couple of weeks and, um, you know, his, his presence in my life was the real break for me because both it helped me, you know, uh, crack the door open to get into baseball, but he also gave me, you know, the, the best, source of advice I could ever ask for and any challenge that I faced throughout Major League Baseball or Chicago Cubs or, you know, the places I've been. Um, so the real break was meeting Mr. Rosen and being able to pick his brain on some of the, uh, you know, the things that made him so wildly successful in his career. So I think, you know, among many breaks I've had in my career, that's the one that really sticks out. For any kids that might be watching that, that have a love for baseball that might not be able to play at the highest level, do you have any advice you, you would give to them about chasing down a career in baseball? The best advice I have is the same advice I give to our players. Just be obsessed with getting better. Just find something every day that's gonna make you better. Whether it is reading an article or watching video or going to a local you know, minor league game and sitting in the bowl next to a scout and picking his brain or her brain on, on some of the things they're looking at. There's just so many ways in our game that you can get better. There's so many resources to expand your knowledge in this game and I'm sitting in this chair because I was just obsessed with finding ways to learn a little bit more about baseball and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm here 
you know, I had some, some great mentors along the way, but I think, you know, that, that deep-rooted obsession with, with getting better um, can really propel you, you know, as high as you want to go in this game, and that's one of the reasons why I love this game. Baseball is the greatest game we have, you know, and uh, it's a big job, obviously, the job that you have. Does it match what you thought it might be like? I'm sure there's some things that have come along, you're like, wasn't necessarily expecting this. Or maybe you say, hey, this is even better than I anticipated, being able to run this club. Yeah, it's even better than I anticipated. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. I hate losing more than anything. Um, you know, our big league team is not where I, I want it to be right now, but we're making a lot of progress, and I feel the fan support every day, which, uh, you know, is so comforting to, to me, to AJ, and to our entire organization. So on that front, it's, it's better than I thought it would be, you know, as a new resident of Detroit. Um, it's really fun to, to see all the fan support and, you know, with Parker walking it off and seeing the fan support. And then, you know, on social media, seeing all of the, the videos of the Homer from different angles and just the joy in, in this park, it's, um, it's a sign of things to come. And I'm, I'm just really excited to be here and thankful for the opportunity. Fly ball, right field, and deep, it's gone! Grand slam! Olsen playing bully ball on a Monday night in Detroit. Big blast.